say here there's a war coming. Oh, beauty, read it, Scratch. War is nigh. When Mother England calls, her far-flung children will answer. Australia will answer. We will answer with food, with military equipment, with money and with men. Fine young men, the pride of this country. It is they who will fight, who will sacrifice and who will carry the day for Mother England and her empire. God save the king. These young men will be the best we have to offer. Country boys who work hard, shoot straight and ride like the wind. What about our sea blokes? Hang on, where next? And city boys, hardened in the factories through honest toil, eager to lay down their lives for the empire. Thanks, Cobber. Oh, mate. End up better than him. Rabbit! Rabbit! Fresh rabbit! It's your country too, young man. Is it? I take it you're a coward. Oh, I don't know yet, mister. So, if war broke out tomorrow, you'd let him do your fighting for you? <laughs> oh, I must. All according. According to what? According to who we were fighting and what we were fighting for and whether the likings are you. Thank you, pardon, mister. And all the other old blokes. And all the rich blokes and the generals and politicians was fighting alongside us and getting shot at and blown up and dying. I tell you what, mister, how about you and me make a little bit of a pledge to each other? As soon as this war breaks out, you leg it on down to the recruiting depot and sign on and I'll be right behind you. And that's where I'll stay, right through this war. Right behind you. Ah. <laughs> Rabbit! Rabbit! Oh. Come on, buy a rabbit! Rabbit! Walk out, gather! Mr. Richard says the six point is still to come. There's always something still to come. Mr. Packer, Mr. Grazer. Oh, I expect, young Will, you'll be clearing off to join the army soon. Of course you will, off to fight for your country. Well, won't you? I don't know. Boy's only 14, Bob. Oh, the lads will be doing it, putting up their age. We'll just have to manage without you, won't we, eh, Thomas? The country comes first, you know. Out of your socialist ideal, eh, Thomas? Oh, I'm sure you'll do the right thing. Is William at home, Mrs. Barnes? No, he's not. The last time he was in court charged with failure to attend compulsory military training, he was given three months in which to make up for the drill that he missed. That time expired last week. He has his reasons. We've been through all this before. I'm simply here to tell you that if he does not attend his military training next Saturday afternoon, he will be summoned again before a police magistrate. And this time the outcome will be a good deal more serious. I'll tell him you call. The man from the army was here again today. He says it's serious this time. Yes. I think it's time we discuss this, Will, don't you? You know I've always encouraged you to think for yourself. You've done that, you've made your point. But now that there's a war... Every man refused to fight, there'd be no war. Let me finish. You were entitled to take such a stand during... I won't. I won't learn how to kill. It's stupid. This is real. It's war. Our country... You always said wars are futile. Some wars are necessary. I didn't mean that the way it sounded. Listen to yourselves. What do you want me to do, Dad? I want you to report for drill on Saturday. Well, I won't. Nobody can make me kill if I don't want to. I'm going to make me a fortune out of this war. How's that? Soldiers' hats are made of felt. Felt's made from rabbit's fur. 
And I can't grab it. Stands to reason. Looking for you, are they? Oh, Struth. There he is. <laughs> We're looking for you bikes everywhere. Yes? Uh, is Mr. William Barnes at home? Oh, could you tell me where I might be able to find him? Uh, William Barnes. That's right. You are to appear in court, 10 o'clock Tuesday. This is your fourth time before me, isn't it, Mr. Crocker? Yep. And my story hasn't changed, Your Majesty. I'm a working man. If I didn't have to sell me bunnies, I'd be able to drill too. Just like those rich boys that go to school. Yes, I've heard you on that before too. <laughs> you refuse to drill, therefore this court has no alternative but to send you to a place where you'll be forced to drill. I hereby sentence you to three months military training at Fort Queenscliff. Thank you, Your Majesty. <laughs> I can't fit in me boxing training, me fights at the stadium and me army drill. You should also be learning to fight to defend your country. If there was money in it, I'd give it a go. <laughs> Three months. You have a religious objection to bearing arms, I take it. No, Your Worship. Then what is your objection? I'm opposed to war, to violence. Under all circumstances? Yes, Your Worship. So if a burglar broke into your house and threatened to kill your mother, you'd do nothing to save her. Well... I would attempt to restrain him. Excuse me, Your Worship. And who are you, sir? The boy's father, Your Worship. With respect, my son's convictions are most sincerely held. He's maintained his position now for five years. Against all odds. Tell me, Mr. Barnes, do you share your son's ideals? No, Your Worship. So you're defying your father as well as the law. I have no choice but to sentence what you to a fort... disgrace! Shame on you. You have no right to persecute these boys. War is wrong. Shame on you. To Fort Queenscliff for three months. <laughs> When the trumpets of war sound, the noble hounds of courage and patriotism arise. But so too do the twin curves of cowardice and disloyalty. What does that mean? Some want to fight and some don't, I reckon. The present rash of so-called conscientious objectors is the work of obscure religious groups and traitors who lead young men astray, said the Prime Minister. My brother knows the country. Reckons he's not the full quid. Ah, they're all cowards. Will you let me finish? War requires everyone to do their duty. Man, woman and child. There can be no room for waverers and cowards, all these religious fanatics. Show these boys the rod of discipline, the purifying fire of clean living, and they will find steel in their souls, fire in their limbs, 
and they will defend all this country holds dear. And they can be transformed from a rabble of selfish individuals into a formidable fighting machine. And as for these objectors, the voice of reason will prevail. The army hates you lot. You know that, don't you? We are here to protect the sea approaches to Melbourne, not spend our time booting hooligans and pansies around the parade ground. You are a stinking nuisance. You scum. But now that you're here, we're going to make the best of a very bad job. Sir. Sergeant. Men, I'm your commanding officer. Colonel Henderson, this is not a prison. This is a military fortress. You are here to experience the very best in modern military training. You came through those gates a bunch of slovenly, irresponsible, undisciplined drill dodgers. You will go out a squad of tidy, fit, clear-eyed young men. Well on the way to becoming splendid Australian soldiers, ready to fight to defend your king and country. Are there any questions? Yeah. When do we eat? <laughs> Sergeant. Sir! Have that man stand out. Sir! You! One pace forward. I'll leave you to deal with this, Sergeant. Sir! Carry on, Sergeant. Sir! Name? Ned. Name? Ned Crocker. Ugh. Name? Crocker, Sergeant. Crocker. Cadet Crocker. First smart aleck named and noted. You watch yourself, boy. Fall in. Be warned. I've had them smarter and tougher than you lot. And nobody, and I repeat, nobody has ever got the better of me. Understood? And 38. Yep. Sorry, but now we need to get through three months of this. 32. What if they don't fit? Well, if they're too loose, you eat more. And if they're too tight, you hold your breath. Funny man. 26. And 34. I can't wear this. What? What'd you say? I can't wear this uniform. What's wrong with it? I can't wear a military uniform. It's against my principles. Is that right? Yes, sir. What's your name, son? Barnes, Sergeant. Barnes. So now we've dug up a fully blown conscientious objector. A conchy. These principles of yours, Barnes, they don't extend to cleanliness, do they? What? It's not against your religion to wash, is it? Cleanliness is next to godliness, Barnes. You don't mind a bit of water? No, of course not. And I don't have any religion. So you're a heathen, as well as a conchie.
Cover your dressing. Left turn. Quick march. Halt. Cadet Barnes. Yes, Sergeant. You're under arrest. Sit down, Rad. Sit down. Well, now, Cadet Barnes. I think you've made your point well and truly. You don't need to overdo it, you know. There's no one in here to witness your little heroics. You have your principles. I understand that. I don't agree with them, but I think I understand. But no one will be any wiser if you meet us halfway. I don't know what you mean. Well, you seem like an intelligent lad. Perhaps we can show you that the modern army is not all killing and violence. Keep him up. Are you, Conchi? What are you reading? A book. <laughs> Come on, hit me. Be a waste of time. What do you mean? I hit you, then you hit me back again. That's why violence doesn't work. I'll give it up, will you? Have you got a problem? Yeah, you. I want to sleep. You wouldn't be sticking up for your conchy mate, would you? He's not my mate. He's going to make it tough for all of us. You watch. The sergeant's going to give us curry until he breaks. Well, that won't worry a big tough bloke like you, will it? But me? I need my sleep. Give in now, Conchi, and save us all some pain. Within days, war shall be declared. Then every man, woman and child will be required to throw themselves into the struggle if dear old England is to win. I'm going to put me age up. My dad reckons they should send all the politicians off to fight. Nah, they're all too old. They need young blokes like me. What else does it say? Australia expects every able-bodied man to heed the call. Those who cry out in opposition are our enemies. They are traitors in our midst and should be dealt with as we deal with our enemies, without mercy. This conscientious objector, Cadet Barnes, any progress? None whatsoever, sir. Still refusing to obey orders, sir. Place him on non-combatant duty, Sergeant. Treat him more gently than you have the previous ones. You know as well as I do, Sergeant, the Army doesn't like this youth training caper. It's a politician stunt. Cheaper than maintaining a proper standing army. With respect, sir, these conchy kids have a shocking effect on the morale of the other boys. I would recommend a couple of days in the cooler for Cadet Barnes, sir. You heard my orders, Sergeant. Kid gloves. Sir! That coward Barthes, the CO's darling little conchy boy. Special duties for you, Barnes. But I watch it, boy. One mistake and you're back with me. Then we'll have some fun. And then we just... 
Then we just move them about from one position to another to spell out different codes, see? Like A, D. I must abandon ship. Nothing to it, mate. Here, you have a go. No, I can't. Son, we don't shoot people with flags. We just talk to each other with them. No, but the signals tell people what to shoot, right? Yeah. I suppose so, sort of. And that's the same thing. Listen, I've got it easy up here. All I do is wag a couple of flags about. In the night time, I'd wink some lights to me mates over there on the other side of the bay. In between times, I just sit on me bum and bludge. So I'm not about to let some mealy-mouthed conchy muck it up for me with these stupid arguments. My duty's up in half an hour, so you just hang about to let them behave yourself. I'll tell them you're colourblind. They'll think of something else for you, just you see. I've had this. Sergeant! I'm afraid I can't do signals. It's teaching people how to hit targets. Is that right, Barnes? Well, if you don't want the easy jobs, I can give you the filthy ones. Get down here on the double. Thank you, Mrs. Wilts, but what is it? It's a white feather. We give them to cowards. Is that so? Well, you've come to the wrong address. There are no cowards living here. There's my husband, who's helped you out more than once. And then there's young Will, who cuts your lawn every month for nothing. He's in a camp because he stood up for his beliefs and his mother is proud as punch. So there you are. If all our men refused to fight, where would we be? All wars are civil wars, Mrs. Wills. Brother against brother. Like some neighbors. I'll take this and put it in my Sunday best and wear it proudly. And uh, if you'd like to come around for a cup of tea any time, just knock. What are you on about, Will? All this conchy stuff. Just using a drill. Wear your uniform properly. Nothing tricky about it. I'm just not prepared to learn how to kill. But things are killing other things all the time. Blokes kill the rabbits I sell. Animals kill each other. Blokes kill blokes. It's a way of the world. It doesn't have to be that way. And how come I seen you peeling spuds and serving out grub tonight? Feeding the troops so they'll be fit enough to go and kill someone. Why were you doing that? Maybe it's because I'm a coward. No, you're not, mate. You might be a bit of a mug. You're not a coward.
Finished, have you, Barnes? Yes, Sergeant. Done a good job. A real good job. In fact, you've done such a good job. You can do it all again. Barnes, let's fill it up. <laughs> what is this, Barnes? A shovel, Sergeant. A shovel, correct. It's not a rifle, is it, Barnes? No, Sergeant. So, to drill with this harmless, peace-loving, non-combatant shovel... <laughs> Couldn't possibly be against your conchy principles, am I right, Barnes? No, Sergeant. I mean, yes, it would still be military drill. A shovel would be in place of a rifle. Now, I'm going to give you a choice, Barnes. You can drill with this shovel or you can shovel with it. You can fill that dray again and I'll come along and tip the whole thing out and you can fill it again and again and again. Now, what's it going to be, Cadet Barnes? Drill or fill? I'll drill. What's that, Barnes? I can't hear you. Speak up! I said I'll drill, Sergeant. Right. Attention, Cadet Barnes. Slope arms. Weak. March. Right turn. Quick march. Halt. About turn. Quick march. Halt. About turn. Quick march. Faster, Barnes. Halt. About turn. Quick march. And I mean faster. Halt. Shove your shovel and you can shove your army. <laughs> Cadet Sanders. Yes, Sergeant. Cadet Barnes seems to need some help with his shovel drill. Yes, Sergeant. Attention! Oh. Quick march! Come on. Sanders. Come and make me. Come on. Have a go. Was he drilling with a shovel, Sergeant? In place of a rifle, sir. Because of his non-combatant status, sir. Go on. Yes, well. He clobbered... That is, he assaulted Cadet Sanders with the shovel, sir. And then Cadet Crocker took it upon himself to break ranks, and he assaulted Cadet Sanders, sir. And between the both of them, they gave him a rather nasty beating, sir. You leave me no option but to sentence you both to the cells. Seven days apiece. Why'd you give in to him? Why did you drill? Even with a shovel. Couldn't take any more. Made a mistake. 
I made it yesterday. I do miss him. Dodging the law all me life. I get lumbered because of some stupid conchy. You thump sand is not me. That's gratitude. Hardly did it to stop him ripping your head off. You been in jail before, Ned? Oh, a couple of times. Just overnight. Nothing like this. Says here, they sling the blokes who refuse to do military training into jail and treat them rough. What they deserve. Don't know about that. But anyway, there was an argument in Parliament about it yesterday. Some politicians, geezer, reckons that these boys are citizens of a free country. And no matter what their beliefs, they should be treated fairly and with, with dignity. And the government should investigate these claims immediately. Come, sir. Plus, there's someone underneath. Compliments of the crook. You must like you, blacks. Not a vegetarian by any chance? No. Why? We came as soon as we got your letter. You didn't have to. I'm all right. I'm very proud of you. You've been very brave. Most of the time. We've had a good talk with the commanding officer, and the army's agreed to release you from confinement to do restricted physical training. Non-combatant, of course. Just for a week, and then you can come home. I can't do that. Not now, I've come too far. We've all come too far. And then there's Ned. I told you about him in my letter. He'd still be in there. It's our principles, our beliefs. That's not something we take lightly, is it? Well, is it? it was about to start, you know. You blokes will get yours then. How's that? Well, you know what you be? Traitors. You know what they do to traitors? You mean they'll shoot us? Oh, worse than that. They'll push up in the front line, let the Germans shoot you. Stop there. Go. On our way out. What? I'm not hanging around here to get shot. You don't believe that. Stay there. I'm going. Place to the beach. We'll wait for that. Great. I'm on that cave there. Down the rocks. You want the water, soldier? You want the water? You say it's out of your pocket, boy. Get up in that swamp up there. 
Come on, let's go. They're coming this way. I'm not going. Are you mad? They'll shoot you. I'll risk it. You go. I'll take care of them. Now look out of that fear. Good luck. Yeah, yeah, you too. Oi! I'm over here! Oi! Get him! Save your little curve. Come on. Yeah. What? I hate you, Barnes. Not because you're a miserable, whinging conchy. Because you're a menace. You're dangerous, Barnes. In times of war, good men get killed because of the likes of you. You're a coward. You're the coward. Sergeant! Sir! This man needs to be taught a lesson, sir. You may leave. Ned Crocker will be caught, and you leave me no option. Seven days solitary confinement, attempting to escape. Hey, Conchi! Know where we're off to? Off to fight for king and country. That's where. Then you'll all die. You boys came here as ruffians and lawbreakers. You are leaving as soldiers. The forces of darkness are gathering over Europe at this very moment. The day when you will be offered the opportunity to show your metalless soldiers may not be far away. Return to your homes and await the call. And may God bless you. Your parade, Sergeant. Sir! Squad! Ten! Shoot! Thank you, Sergeant. Australia is at war. This establishment is now on full defence alert. There's no place for you here. You're free to go. You're a brave lad. As brave as any soldier. and our allies will win this war because we have God on our side and young men willing to die rather than accept tyranny. Attention! Falling! Hurry up! All those willing to die rather than accept tyranny, quick march! What? Quick march! 
scratch. Might as well. This is Ned. Ned? Well, what do you reckon? Well, I think it looks very handsome. And uh, your timing's perfect. We're just about to eat. Pull up a chair. I've been thinking about it for a while. You see, this time they were asking me, not telling me. Somehow it seemed like the right thing. Used to the right thing. Yeah, yeah. And to courage. Jimmy. Well, this is it. Thanks for sticking by me. No worries, mate. You stick to your guns, I'll stick to mine. 